Okay, checking in from the road. Uh, I just passed a sign that said uh, beginning historic Route 66. So this is Golden Springs or something like that. And uh, this is part of the historic uh, 66 route. And boy, let me tell you, the road ain't good. <laughs> it's been uh, bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. Yeah, historic Route 66. Cool. I mean, it's certainly been redone since the old days, but no, I'll tell you, this ain't good. This is not, uh, not quality pavement here. It is like one continuous pothole. Very rough surface. And oh boy, did it just get windy. So I got 41 miles to my next turn. Just scrolling out to see where my first uh, bonus point is. I don't even see it. It's way out there. I don't think I've missed one yet. But I'm happy to... Running solo today, so I don't have anybody uh, fact checking me or map checking me. Make sure I don't make a routing error. So we'll see if I uh, miss any bonus points or anything today. So that works. Now, somebody was near me a minute ago before I slowed down for that town back there, 25 miles an hour. Uh, I don't know if I was gaining on them or they were gaining on me from behind, but uh, I heard somebody come in and talking on the comms. I couldn't tell who it was, and then they disappeared. So it must be somebody that I've grouped up with before, unless Cardo just decided to uh, tune me into a radio station. Done. But I don't hear him now. Hello, hello, check, check, radio check. Nope. Still running solo. I'm here by my lonesome. It's okay. Kind of like it. <laughs> as long as my belt doesn't snap out here in the middle of nowhere. Oh, God, this going to suck. I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera, but I keep seeing the uh, strap for my uh, hydration pack in my peripheral vision and it's bugging me. I need to reach back there and pull it tight to where it's not flapping around in my mirror because I see something moving and I go, oh, somebody's closing on me? No, I'm closing on me. It's my own strap. Oh, oh, hello, hobby horse. Yeah, this road sucks. Ugh. It's not as bad as gravel, though. I'll take this over gravel. It boondocking. Look at that. Just park it anywhere, man. Cool. Anyway, a lot of this. This is getting interesting. Those are some big rocks, kids. It's been pretty boring, just twisty turny, a lot of little whoop de doos and dips, uh, but now it's starting to get interesting. Those, those are mountains.
I didn't even pay attention to the uh, the route book today to know how far I'm supposed to go before I uh, check the winner bonus point. Hopefully I haven't missed one yet, but we'll find out. Uh, I'm just going until I see the bullseyes on the trick tracks. keep on plugging I'll have a fuel stop and of course all the uh, checkpoint stops but saying that my arrival tonight is going to be 5 p.m. so that's not bad I'll figure 6 6 30 I probably won't take a lunch break or anything like that and just ride straight through but with the fuel stops and the uh, uh, pictures and you know all that checkpoints uh, it's going to add an hour to it hello technical corner decreasing radius hey uh, Oh, hey, I was on group connection with somebody. It's just a group connection lost. Cool. Oh, well, maybe I'm at a checkpoint. Yeah, look at that. See, it's popping up on the, uh, on the thing. It's ain't it yet, though. They stopped a little before. That's the first people I've seen out here on the route yet. Uh, the uh, bullseye is coming up here. And, couple miles it looks like. Yeah, some of these corners you gotta watch out for. They're a little on the tight side. wind is not making it easy. <laughs> Try to set a line and this thing's got so much surface area a big gust of wind comes up and you, no I don't want to go that far into the apex damn it. I don't want the rocks over there on the inside edge I know that's not going to feel good. Quit trying to help me. not enter when flooded okay so this is a flood prone area you can imagine when it rains all this these low spots just turn into raging rivers Six miles to go, but not to that checkpoint. There isn't your bonus point, whatever it is. Uh, BP one, yeah, bonus point one. So I haven't missed one. That's good. Closer. I keep hearing these sounds in my headset going whoop, and I'm assuming it's uh, Google Location Services uh, updating my location because of the app, but I don't know what that sound is. Whoop, whoop. It does it every couple minutes. It hasn't done it through here, I presume, because there's no uh, cell, cell service. Uh, 
uh, until just now, did it? Oh. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Woke up this morning with a cough. Getting close. It's supposed to be a rusty car or something like that, if I remember. Burros on the road. Saw one yesterday. I don't know if I had the camera rolling for that or not, but he just sauntered right across the road in front of me and then I guess the scooter spooked him and he went running and took off into the shoulder. So that was good. Better than running out in front of me. So, rusty car. If I remember right. Get a little closer. Old trails. Zoom in. Don't wreck. Yeah, it's got to be in this little town. Coming up on it. I don't see any other scoots yet. I see a breakdown truck. Rusty car. What am I taking a picture of? Must be this. Oh, God. Bless this. is rough. Yep, old trails, rusty car. And that is a soft shoulder, kids. Ugh. Like real soft. Okay. Don't tip over. Well, hello. Gotcha. Yeah, I heard you drop in and out a couple times on the comms. I wondered who it was. Yeah, I kept hearing my music drop. I thought, I can't find it. I think I'd see you all day. Yeah, well, I'm not running fast, so. Sorry? Wasn't that a beautiful ride? Oh, yeah, it's a good ride. Have you been there before? No, I've not been through here. I've never seen it. It's so pretty. Okay. Well, back on the road. Yeah, you don't need to go slow for me today, Tyler. You can just run. I'm going to I'm trying to keep it right around 60 at the most because I don't want to burn another belt. That's going to piss me off. Yeah, I was having the same thought actually. I was other than the interstate, I've been keeping it about the same. Yeah, all right. Well, we can ride together if you want. Kind of kind of shit kind of fun in the curves though. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was I was running a little fast. I was not uh, not staying with the speed limit, let's say that. Okay, the next one is an antique store in... No, that's this. That's this. Gas tanks at Crazy Fred's truck stop. All right. Gas tanks at Crazy Fred's. How was the campground? That was good. Uh, they actually had a little power pedestal, showers, everything there. So I just hung out there. Nice. Mm. All right. I'm going to roll. You can catch me on the road because I'm going slow. So we've got 24 miles uh, to our next turn. Not that many. Uh, I had uh, like 2,500 on that belt before it chewed itself, so I don't know. It's weird. 
Oh, like, yeah, minimum, uh, eight to 10,000 minimum, and that's with abuse. So, yeah, yeah, they're supposed to last like 14 to 16. Okay, this, no, no, Honda OEM, so I don't know what it was. It's a real slow zone here. Don't know which way we're going, I guess left, yeah, left. Okay, if we end up with that. Uh, Gotcha. Well, I've got a spare uh, that Robbie gave me. Uh, he is on a PCX 150, and uh, it uh, he had to pull out, so he's not not playing. So he's gone back home, and he gave me his uh, Molossi belt, which I don't know if it's going to be as good or stable as the factory one, but yeah, in a pinch, it's better than me pushing. So. Okay. Well, it's much, it's smaller and lighter than the factory belt by far. I mean, it's a lot, it's, it's thinner, yeah. So I don't know how they made it lighter, thinner, all that. The package is smaller, it's not as heavy, everything. So I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, it makes you wonder. I mean, is it the same quality or what's going on? How can they get by with uh, less material, lighter material, and all that, and uh, still have the same amount of contact patch? So I don't know. It's supposed to be Kevlar, so I'm not sure what the factory ones are made of. I kept my factory one, though. I'm going to keep that as a souvenir, man. Because the way that it, it shredded was interesting. It didn't uh, it didn't totally snap and, you know, wind up in a pretzel like most of them do. Uh, it just lost its teeth, so the long fiber cords, you know, Kevlar cords, whatever it is, are still intact. Uh, it's just missing a bunch of teeth everywhere and it was in one of the spots that didn't have any teeth that slipped down between the clutch pulleys and locked it up so it it pinched it in and locked it and that's why I you know ended up sliding to a stop ooh tight corner <clears throat> Yeah, normally uh, kinetic energy, you know, the, the pulleys and the weight of the bike rolling and all that, it's just going to shear it in pieces and it's going to wind up in there. So. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping it was just overheat and uh, the hard highway miles coming in from Texas, high speeds, all that. And then right before it blew up yesterday, I was running pretty fast. You know, I was doing 76, 78 sustained in that crazy heat. And uh, I think that's what did it. Ooh, a really tight decreasing radius. Watch this one. This thing is so top heavy with all this shit on the back seat. It wants to tip in a lot more on the corners than I want it to. Oh, you'd love a Super Motard then. You could get a, you know, a KTM uh, Super Motard uh, 390 or, uh, you know, something like that in this range. And uh, they're just a hoot, man. They're not overly powerful to get you in trouble like the Dukes and some of the others. Ooh, that's rough. Uh, but uh, the, you can just chuck them into corners and they've got traction for days. I mean, you can drag the pegs on them before the traction gives out on the tires. It's just amazing. Good fun. That's what I grew up doing was uh, super motard racing. But it was before it was really a popular sport here in the States. So we would take our... Uh, race bikes or dirt bikes you know the uh, yz 80s and 125s and stuff like that uh, and we would put slicks on street bike tires and smaller front tire uh, instead of the bigger you know dirt oriented tire anyway so slicks basically and we take them out on go-kart tracks and just absolutely tear the place up it was such a freaking hoot because they they're light and nothing but horsepower you know they just they're they're beer cans with an engine and they just go like crazy so you can throw them into corners and it's just traction and uh, muscling out of the corners and sliding the ass in the round and just having a blast. Good times, good times. This is a very technical ride in here and 
my top heavy bike is not liking it. Yeah. That's a motard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to be a motard, well, to be a motard, you need a 17 inch front wheel. So if you take a dirt bike and convert it, you need to put a street bike wheel on the front. Because if you still have the, the larger front wheel with it, oh, hey, that's slick. Uh, the inertia. <laughs> yeah, my front tire washed. There's a sand on there. Anyway, um, if you still have that larger tire with that, you know, more inertia and a narrower cross section, you don't get all the, uh, the cornering performance and you know it's not as quick to tip in and all that so a proper motard has a 17 inch front wheel and either a 17 or 18 inch rear but uh it's set up ready to go that's yep it's our yep it's dialed in and whoa overshot this is a uh, crazy steep oh man i am full throttle yeah this is tight watch it Ooh, man that is a tighter than 90 degree or tighter than 180 degree switchback super tight come on bike go 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 i have no climbing i'm gonna burn my belt out again i'll get pissed off uh yeah so the uh the super motards are fun they, you can get a little one like a, a klx uh I think they have the KLX 250 SM for Super Motard. Uh, I don't know if anybody's really making them now, except for uh, uh, well, Kawasaki had theirs, but I think KTM is really the only one making them. Yeehaw. Uh, yeah, until the factory scene really got in it and started uh, making bikes particularly for that market you know to, to suit the to suit that niche uh, yes yeah 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 and sometimes you have to shorten it because uh, your stroke is too long and you're up too high so you'll shorten your front stroke and get it down to where your weight balance is lower makes for quicker transitions and all that because you're typically not jumping super motards there there's some off-road course stuff that you do but you're not flying big air and doing the crazy uh, off-road as much uh, they're more for quick transition on pavement off pavement uh, but typically you get slicks on it you might have uh, dirt tread but not knobbies so because they're predominantly uh, it's a street uh, oriented deal so Ooh, yeah. the downhill was fun the climb out of here is a little bit uh, testy I wish I could lose 40 pounds on this back seat I'll tell you that I had it to do over again I'd probably put the factory variator back in this thing before this trip because I would have had the acceleration and the climbing uh, it's just really hey, tight absolutely tight yeah that's a that's a 180 with no warning there yeah uh -huh. yeah 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 yeah, you get used to, I, I just, I ride the left, like what would be the clutch lever, I ride the brake up here on the scooters. It's just habit, you know, I switch back and forth between them. Yeah, yeah, and just be ready to, you know, get into that rear brake. You always want your, try your rear a little more than your front. Yeah, exactly, it's like, oh shit, where are my brakes? Where? Oh. And it's not there, yeah. Now check out this rock, oh shit. I want that thing to fall. Yeah, exactly. And luckily that uh, ADV has got choky tires. It's got really good, you know, you got good leverage on the bars, so it's good for cornering. This one carves really well, but the bars are in kind of a funny position. And if you put any bias, any weight on it, it really, you know, like decelerating, if you're pushing on the bars, man, it really affects the, the line. And uh, I have to be careful because if I don't have my feet forward, holy shit! Look at that off to the uh, forward. Don't don't go off, but look at that shit. Whew, that would be a long drop. Uh, 
so if I don't have my feet forward on the the foot bars up here, you know, on the, uh, the floorboards, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, my weight transfer will go forward, and I'll start influencing the bars, and my line changes. I gotta, I gotta push off the floorboards. Tight, tight, tight. So normally with a motorcycle, you know, doing this kind of riding, you can grip the, the tank uh, and you bias your weight uh, on your the balls of your feet and gripping the tank to, you know, lean the bike and do all that. But there's nothing to grab here. It's just the center tunnel. So I'm putting too much weight on the bars. Uh, you scrub as much speed as you can with the front, but then you let off of it gently before you enter the corner. Not so much that you pogo your suspension, but you don't want to be in your front tire hard as you're banking because then you're trying to make it do two traction chores, slowing and cornering, and that's where you break traction. So you always want to bias out of your front brake uh, as you're leaning in and apexing the corner and then if you need to do any more braking it's a gentle balance between front and rear uh you never want to stab your rear because that can make you lose traction Ooh. Uh, but yeah and especially on these canyon runs where you got these long downhill you want to make sure that you modulate in and out of your brakes to let them cool off because you don't want to overheat them and then they're not there when you need it for you know that going off into the distance whoopsie <laughs> Look, boy, I can fly. Oh, goddamn, that's rough. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to look at it. Yeah, it's good shit. Yeah, that's boring. Yeah, that's boring. You do what you gotta do. Unfortunately, to get to a lot of these roads, you gotta crush the highway slab to get there, so. That's always the, the hard part about finding the the ideal uh, lightweight ADV, tight, 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 uh, is you've got to find one that's lightweight and flickable and can handle off-road, but it's also got to be able to uh, tackle the long highway slogs to get to your trailheads and where you want to go. It's just hard to find that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Correct, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, I totally agree. Watch out, rocks on the road. Uh, I agree with that, because the the weight, anything over about 400 pounds, more rocks, uh, anything over about 400 pounds off the road, just, it sucks, it's too heavy. And it can be done, yeah, it can be done, of course, but it, there's just so much more in motion there. You know, the kinetic energy, the, the shit that breaks when it goes down, picking it up off the ground multiple times, you know, all that just, it gets to be too much. It's not fun for me. Other people can do it. You know, guys that are bigger stature, fine. Let them have it. You know, if you're 225 pounds and, you know, built like a lumberjack, fine. You can manhandle that shit. But when the bike weighs, you know, triple what I do, no, that's not fun. I can pick them up, but I don't like doing it more than a couple times. Yeah, you just put your legs in it, you can pick them up, but God, when the bike weighs 450, 500, 550, you know, come on, that's that's triple, getting up on almost quadruple my body weight, that's just too much to manhandle. That was wind. Right. Yeah, don't, you're, you're on the wrong bike. You're just on the wrong bike, that's all there is to it. 
I wish we had the group comms recording today. I don't know how the group comms recorded. Woo! Uh, I didn't turn on the recorder because I didn't know if I was going to find anybody else. Ooh, that's wind. The wind is really pushing this thing around today, man. I got too much surface area. twitchy man you get the crosswinds on that navi and it will just it dances all over the road and it's not like unstable but it's not confidence inspiring either <laughs> you know you're like uh, is it gonna stay there yeah that's what it felt like to me it's like shit i got a flat tire no it's just that little narrow rear wheel and smaller diameter and it makes it sit there and flutter around on the road Is this our nope it's not a checkpoint we'll keep going what was what is this old springs nope all right we'll keep going that's not a checkpoint i didn't see a bullseye so we're going oh that's rough god damn that's rough <clears throat> oh yeah yeah no worries that's the one i ran in the 21 cannonball so i knew it would do a good job this time Good, uh, good piece of equipment. Yep. Absolutely. And the, yeah, and the problem that I've run into with all the phone nav apps is you never know if they're going to stay running. Sometimes they just quit and you're listening for, you know, audible instructions or whatever, you get complacent and you've overshot your turn by 30 or 40 miles or whatever. It's like, oh man, that thing stopped working. And you got multiple apps, everything's running in the background and you end up dicking around with settings and turn this one off when you should have left the other one on. And yeah, it's, just, it's better to have a dedicated device for it. 